Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. God is good. And all the time, our God is certainly good. Hallelujah. Let me let you get off your feet. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, I'm getting you, getting you off your feet early this morning, right? Amen. Amen. Good morning, saints of God. And praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm grateful for yet one more time able to get up here in front of you and declare the Lord's word. Amen. And praise him right along with you. Hallelujah. Lift up my voice. Lift up my hands. And praise and adoration to his glorious name because he is worthy of praise and it's his blood that made me worthy to even praise his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yesterday we went to the nursing home. I was a little bit gimpy and look at me now. I told you about Sundays. I told you about Sundays. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just grateful. That's real. That's me telling you about God's miracle every single week. Every single week. I know the devil gets mad about it. Sometimes I think he wants an assignment, just like he did with Job. Let me at him. Let me at him. Let me at him on Sundays. Lower that hedge. Hallelujah. I'm just telling you my little testimony. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Just so good to be here. Just so good to be trusted with a, a work. Hallelujah. Good to be trusted with the word. Good to have people to speak into. Amen. Just good to have a place to worship him in. Good to have air conditioning and heating. Hallelujah. Good to have cushy seats. Hallelujah. Good to have a place for the children to be. Good to have a place for the babies to be. Hallelujah. Just so grateful for what God has done in my life, in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Just so good to declare that he's so worthy. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't know when your last time is. You better act like it. You don't know when your last time is. You really want that to be your last? You want that to be the last play they see you run? You want it to be a half step and sometimey kind of I don't care kind of thing? Mediocre? I want them to see me sprawled out, going to the floor for the ball. I want them to see me stretching out for the pass. I want them to see me taking the hits if I got to take the hits. Amen? I want to leave it all out on the field because God is worthy. He's given me the opportunity. I'm on carpe diem. Seize the day. Hallelujah. I want to welcome everyone that's here in person. So good to see you. So good to see each and every one of you. And I uh, also want to welcome everyone who's here with us online. Amen. I, I get your names and, and I tell you every now and then I'm, I'm going to mention those names and I'm grateful for everyone, especially those who have been with us for such a long time, supporting us, but uh, as much as anything, allowing us, trusting us to pour into you. And I'm talking about those who are able to join us live like you all at this moment and those who so faithfully check us out on Facebook and YouTube after the fact. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We are blessing. We are making a difference in many people's lives, even pastors, even bishops. Amen. Amen. We are making a difference. God is choosing to use this little place. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Small and mighty. Notice the difference. Small and mighty. I often say small but mighty, but today I'm saying small and mighty. Amen. Amen. That is this ministry. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now we're still praying for all those on the prayer list and uh, Pastor Trina has already announced to you all the additional uh, names. I'm going to add one more. A brother, a wonderful brother in the Lord that I happen to have as a, as a colleague during my career who's now in, in, in Florida and who's now dealing with uh, a cancer. He dealt with cancer and they were successfully able to treat that cancer, but the treatment for that cancer made him vulnerable and allowed another cancer to come. It's one of those things about that kind of cancer. And so I'm standing with him and I ask that you stand with him as well. His name is Jim Winninger. Jim Winninger, wonderful brother in the Lord. We were able to really uh, uh, manifest God on the job. Amen. Even though they have all those HR rules, you know it's tricky. And the further up you go, the harder, the trickier it gets. So when you're able to have people say, I, there's something about you. 
And then later for them to say, I knew there was something. About. When you're able to pull that off and when you have another brother or a sister that you can brush up against because you know what they're doing and they know what you're doing. You know what they're about. You know what they know what you're about. When you're able to pull that off, there's a special bond, Amen. a special bond. And so I just want to call out his name and have you know his name. So when you get down on your knees, Jim Winninger. Amen. Go to God on his behalf. One other quick thing, uh, we do have, we've already mentioned it, but I'll mention it again. We have the homeless packages, amen? And it may not just be for somebody homeless, just somebody that's in need, but they're mainly divine for the, excuse me, designed for the homeless because there's lots of, it's like a toiletries thing. And there's women versions, and then there's universal versions, amen? amen. And you know what I'm talking about amen. without me having to say it. <laughs> amen, we have some special things there for the women that may need them. This is our way because we're not going to the park anymore, but each and every individual that's so inclined can pick up a few of those that you didn't have to personally pay for. Amen. We took care of that. You can just have them with you. And when you see somebody in need, give them a dollar or two or more if you moved and give them these practical items. Amen. So you can let them know that God saw them. God sees them. God knows their situation and God care. Sometimes that's just what people need. They may not need a message from you. They may not need a sermon from you. They may not need a finger pointing from you. They may not need those things, but they have a need. They have practical needs, and it's not always easy to take care of those needs. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I do have a message for you. I do have a word. However, before I share the word with you, Brother Melvin has something he wants to talk to us about amen and I, we promised we'd give him an opportunity to do so and so I'm going to call him up here I'm going to give him the podium and I'll be back like Arnold Schwarzenegger said I'll be back amen 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 hallelujah good morning good morning the last time I was up here um, I got to share with you about finding a place um, but prior to that, I had a journey with, with employment. Um, so some of you may remember from before I was unemployed and uh, I started working for uh, Job Corps. Uh, so I was there for a while and then I, God promoted me and I was able to get a job with the uh, post office. And then from there, I had to back up my hours a little bit so I could take care of my father. So I picked up a part-time job. And since then, it's been a struggle. But uh, I'm glad to say that God saw provisions for me. And uh, I was almost there. It was a job opening, full-time position. And there was five openings. And when I first put in my, my bid for it, I was number six on the list. So I was talking to a pastor, and he said, so close. This is the equation. So close plus God. So I'm glad to say that. On Thursday, that position closed to put your bid in. So when I checked it out before I left, I was number five on that list. <laughs> so that's the equation. So close, plus God. And he has saw fit to see me through. From day one to now. You can't tell me that God isn't good. He'll see you. From here to there, you just believe and you follow his word. God is good. God is good. God is good. And all the time, God is good. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Brother Melvin, for that wonderful testimony. Giving God the honor and the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. God bless Brother Melvin with a really good part-time job. Bless him with a job where he can make a difference in people's lives. And uh, a very good hourly wage, but not that many hours. So when you're walking with the Lord, you know how he works. He comes out of nowhere. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Yes, he'll give you a place to stay, but he'll also more than double your income in no time. Hallelujah. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. And, and Brother Melvin had a job similar to that in the past, and God promised him he was going to bring him all the way back, all the way from here to there. He, even had, he was even prophesied to, and I'm talking about prophesied, not prophet lie. I know the difference. I hope you do too. And God brought him all the way there. He's made it so he has provision even with the part-time job because he led him to a place that he never thought he could have, which he told you about last time, which is a beautiful place. Meets all of his needs. And he's able to do, listen to me now, I'm talking about God on a part-time. What can he do with full-time wages? Come on now. What can he do? Tithe the whole way through. Come on now. Come on now. They even cut his hours even a little bit lower, enough to keep his benefits, but they cut him in the last couple months. You know what he did? He didn't have a sob story to tell. He thanked God for everything he had, and he gigged it a little bit to make up the difference. God made a way. He didn't complain. And so now what's God going to be able to do with more than twice as much? Come on now. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Man, when he called me with that news on Thursday, I said, oh, you going to run some laps? We got a track right here. Come on now. <laughs> you going to run some laps? Hey, man, Pastor Trita said, if he don't run, I'm going to run. <laughs> hey, man, just so good to just stop and just bask in the glow of God's man, goodness. Man, Isn't that good? Man. Isn't that good? Come on now. Man. You know you've had your moment. Think back. Think back. Think back. When you couldn't see him, but he was working anyway. You couldn't feel it, but he was working anyway. You think back on your moment. Come on now, you've had one. You've had one. I know you've had one. Hallelujah. Woo, when you needed something. And God made a way, and then he just showed up and showed out. Hallelujah. Then he let you know, he reminded you. Oh, I was watching. Oh, yeah. I was there all along. I was just waiting just on the other side of a very thin veil, just waiting to just break on out. Hallelujah. Knock your socks off. Amen. Blow your mind. Hallelujah. It's beautiful to watch a saint of God being grateful. Seeing God come through in an awesome, awesome way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Melvin, for helping us to be reminded of all the times and in all the ways and all the circumstances where God came through. We stand with you, joyous, celebrating with you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We pray that God continues to bless you and also give you opportunities to bless others. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. To be the man of God that you were meant to be. Keep on pressing. Amen. Amen. Press toward that mark. Lean forward. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. This is no time for the folding of the hands. Amen. This is a time for being about God's business. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So I do have a word for you this morning, although I'd love to just keep on praising. That would be great. Amen. I would love that. But as God sends us forth on our various assignments, he wants us to be equipped for success. So are you guys ready to be equipped a little bit more for success? Amen. Amen. So that you can do God's work so that we can do God's work. And, uh, you know, we have his word, do we not? Do you have his word? You have his word in your Bible. You have some of his word in your heart. You have word, some, some of it in your mind that you've committed to memory. And that is critical for the walk of a Christian. 
We have spiritual gifts. I don't know what your gifts are, but I know what my gifts are. And there's sometimes gifts that I don't have all the time. I get to operate in some of the time. So you have gifts along with the word of God. And he gives you an anointing. He appoints you and he says, I am calling you for that thing. Amen. I am appointing you and I am anointing you. That is your assignment. Go do it for me. God gives you all of that. Amen. Amen. Has he given you that? He gave me that. Amen. Hallelujah. He gives me his word. He's given me the anointing and the appointing. And he has given me gifts in order to execute his, say his, his, his plan. Don't get it twisted. Once you start thinking it's your plan, then you'll start coming up with your own plans. <laughs> Amen. You'll come up with your own ways to execute that plan. And I don't care if, you, if it's your plan and you're executing it be, the way you want to. I don't care what it looks like on the outside. God is not pleased. Amen. Amen. And so Jesus knows that there are certain conditions. Pastors wants to talk to you about a very specific kind of situation right now. Jesus knows that. Once he's given you that assignment, giving you the anointing and the appointing, he's giving you the gifts. Amen. There are some conditions that call for another very important tool. Amen. Amen. This tool is called situational awareness and a response to that situational awareness. I choose to call it spiritual street smarts. This is what Jesus is talking about. You, you can have all sorts of situations throughout their days, weeks, and months, but there are times, there are circumstances where you need to pull into a spe from a very special pocket where you need situational awareness. You need to know this is not like every other day. This is not like every other situation. And again, I choose to call it spiritual street smarts. Without it, you're an easy mark for the enemy. Yes, with your gifts, with your anointing and with your appointing and even with the word of God. There are times when if you do not have situational awareness, what I call spiritual street smarts, you will be an easy mark for the enemy. Amen. However, with this spiritual street smarts, you can succeed even in the most difficult of situations. Amen. Are you with me? Are you ready to learn? Are you ready to come out of here better than you came in here this morning? Spiritual street smarts, situational awareness and response in terms of your walk for the, with the Lord. Let's, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for bringing us here today. Lord God, we ask that you would pour your word into us, Lord God. Lift us up, edify us, Lord God, help us to be better. And Lord God, use me to deliver your word, Lord God. Take the words out of my mouth and plant them as fruitful seeds into the soil of the hearts of your people. Lord God, we ask at this moment that you would increase and I might decrease to the edification of your people and the glorification of yourself. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 So we're talking about the situational awareness, what I call, amen, uh, 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 spiritual street smarts. Anybody ever been on the streets? Everybody, anybody ever operated in the streets? Anybody have to deal with the mean streets of wherever, Detroit, L.A., San Bernardino, whatever it is? There's a different code. You need to have a whole set, different set of, you got to operate a certain way. You just show up and not know anything about how to operate. You're going to have some trouble. Amen. You're going to be a mark and they'll see you coming and you won't see them. Amen. And so let's go to the book of Matthew. Chapter 10. You might be there anyway, because we were in chapter 10. Amen. Last week, nine and 10 last week. And we're going to be looking at verse 16. Usually I have all kinds of verses all over the place. And today we're going to be a little bit more focused I just want to plant a little seed in you, and, and it's possible I may be able to finish real quick like. I know, they're laughing at me. For those of you online, they're laughing because I, I don't usually keep those promises. And so what we see here, as we talked about last week, Jesus is sending his disciples out to preach the kingdom of God ahead of himself. He's sending them to various houses and various cities to deliver this kingdom message to the people reaching out for the willing, 
But how many of you know there were also some unwilling reaching out for those whose hearts were open, but there were also people who wanted to shut them down. There were also enemies. There were also foes. There were also opponents that they had to deal with. Amen. Amen. This particular mission that Jesus was sending them out on, he knew that they had the message. He knew that he had given them power to work miracles and he had given them very specific, if you read it, instructions, which how to, how to approach each house, whether to stay in the house or move on, how to, what, to, what to take with them, what not to take with them. They had instructions, they had power, they had the word, they had the message, but this situation Jesus knew was a little bit different. He knew that this mission required a particular approach. I'm not talking about Pastor Mike thought or knew this. I'm talking about Jesus knew this. So in case you're saying in the back of your mind, hey, any old situation is any old is always the same as long as I'm packing the Holy Ghost. Any situation is always the same as long as I know the word. I'm telling you, we're about to read that Jesus said that this situation was a little bit different. Amen. Amen. So this mission required a certain approach and Jesus addressed it in Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. I'll read it aloud from the King James Version and feel free to read along with me. Where Jesus says, behold, pay attention. I send you forth as what? Sheep. Sheep. Hallelujah. In the midst of wolves. Jesus is admitting the situation, the set of circumstances that he's sending his people out into. Behold, I'm sending you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Reading on, he says, be ye therefore wise as what? Serpents and harmless as what? Doves. Now, we won't spend a whole lot of time on this, but if you notice, he used a lot of uh, animal imagery there. And if you go to the next verse, he says, but woo, when you're dealing with man, beware. <laughs> But all of this relates to dealing with man. But he chose to use animal imagery and then fold it into man. And he told them all about the trouble that they're going to be up against. But Jesus knew that this was a different kind of situation. He knew that he was sending them in his own words out as sheep in the midst of wolves. How many of you know about animals? Does a sheep have any chance against wolves? Does a sheep stand any chance against wolves? And Jesus is not saying, and I'm going to be there to prevent anything from happening to you. If you keep on reading, he is not going to make sure that absolutely nothing happens. And if you really read it carefully, he's talking about these cities and that time. But he's also giving them an advance notice about what's going to happen down the road. It's going to be tough. It's going to be difficult. You're going to have enemies. It's not going to be easy. And so you need certain instructions for these kinds of situations where you are the sheep and you're going amidst many, many wolves. Amen. When you don't have natural advantages, even with the word, even with the anointing, even with the power, you you need to know how to deal in these situations. You need to be facile. And so Jesus is going to deal with this. Amen. So go here with me. So here's the situation. The situation as Jesus is describing it, where he wants you to be aware of and use these special tools, special way of operating. He says, I'm sending you in as sheep amongst wolves. So despite the miracle working power and the power of the message as individuals, they will be at a clear disadvantage, outnumbered, politically out leveraged and operating among those who have a natural dislike, disdain, if not hatred for them. Why? Because of the message that they're bringing and the one that they represent. And you also have a message that you're bringing. You also have things that you're trying to do, but you have an enemy that doesn't like you just because of who you represent. And also, what you choose to do for God's people. So you also will deal with these kind of circumstances. If you haven't already, you will. So pay, so, so pay attention. Amen? Amen. 
So now because of this particular reality of the fact that Jesus knows that he's sending them in as sheep amidst wolves from his own very mouth. Therefore, he says, be ye there for what? Wise. Wise how? Wise as serpents and yet harmless as doves. Now, as you read this, there is no questioning. He says, be ye wise as serpents, as harmless as doves. And there's a word before that that says, therefore. Which means that the being wise as serpents and harmless as doves is, is directly responsive to the situation that he put them in. So there is no question about he's not just dropping something out of the air and just telling you, oh, be harmless as uh, 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 wise as serpents and harmless as doves. He's saying, because I'm putting you in a situation where you are like sheep among wolves with a natural enemy with natural inherent disadvantages that I'm not going to miraculously deliver you from automatically all the time. You need to have spiritual street smarts. Amen. Amen. He says, I need you to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So let's look just a little bit deeper and let's start with this advice that he's given to be wise as serpents now why would jesus tell us to do anything like a serpent did it hit you that way did it hit your ear that wise as what wise as serpents why would jesus do that well the simple fact of the matter is this that at that time the wisdom of a serpent wasn't thought of as automatically bad i know that that's the imagery that we get conjured up in our minds but it was really synonymous with savviness and craftiness listen to me now wisdom that's practical that can work not just in the classroom or not just in high society but can work on the mean streets when you're outnumbered when you're outflanked hallelujah Real world sense is what we're talking about here. So this wise as a serpent, they understood it's not automatically bad. They're not asking them to be a serpent or be like a serpent, but have the craftiness, the savvy, the practical wisdom that a serpent was attributed to. Amen. That was attributed to the serpent. So now let's peel this onion back just a little bit more. What we're talking about here, go there with me back to verse 16. And he says, be ye wise as a serpent. So he wants you to be wise. Here is where we go to the Greek. You know, I've got to do a little bit of Greek whenever it's good for you. I'm never going to give you the Greek medicine unless you really need it. Amen. Unless it's necessary to really make sure that we extract the meaning. What we're used to, what you're accustomed to, is the Greek word Sophia. It's a beautiful girl's name, isn't it? But pastor, what does that mean? It means wisdom. Often used in the Greek. We learn and understand this throughout the Bible. And we're talking about Greek here, not back in Proverbs where that was written in Hebrew, of course. But Sophia is also means wisdom. And its root has the same root as the word that we come up with, the word sophisticated. Do you notice? Sophia means wisdom. Sophisticated means you are wise. You are knowledgeable in the ways of the world. You are knowledgeable about where the forks go and which one to use first. You are knowledgeable. You are expert at things that you need to function in the world. So that same root that gave us Sophia, wisdom, is the same root where we get the word sophisticated. Why am I telling you that? It's to contrast it with what Jesus was saying here. Because he said, be wise as serpents, but the word that he used here was intentional. It was a Greek word, phronimos, amen, P-H. R-O-N-I-M-O-S. My people, just for y'all out there, my people here say when you go to the Greek pastor, spell it out for us because they're going to look it up later. I love it. Hold me accountable for telling you the truth. Hallelujah. Phronimus, not Sophia. Sophia is great. That wisdom is awesome. But Jesus is specific for this situation. I need you to operate in Phronimus, which is practice wise, sensible, even shrewd, recognizing 
the inward motivations. Hear me now. I'm talking about street smarts, spiritual street, street smarts, right? Recognizing the inward motivations that drive a person's actions. I said recognizing the internal motivations that drive a person's actions. When you're on the street, people are going to give you all kind of stuff. They're going to tell you all kind of stuff. They're going to do all kind of stuff, but they're not often going to tell you where they're really coming from. And so I'm telling you, as you go out here going from house to house, dealing with people you don't know, you don't know exactly whether they're for you or against you on the front end. I want you to be able to recognize inner motivations that are driving what they say and do. And I want you to act on that. Not what they're telling you, not the line that they give you, not what they initially present themselves, present you with. I want you to be recognizing their inner motivations. I want you to be able to read people. I want you to test their spirits. That's fine. But I need you to make sure that you're acting on what you really know because you listen to them talk and you didn't buy. You don't always buy their stuff. Are you hearing me? This is Jesus talking. Jesus says, I want you to be wise as serpents. I want you to have a practical wisdom. Very different word. It's sensible, even shrewd. Now, this kind of wisdom can work two ways. It can, it, it, it can cause you to remember your own internal motivation and purpose. Amen? Which in this case was to reach the willing. Listen to me now. I'm trying to tell you what Jesus was trying to tell them so that you can then tell yourself so you can be better. He, this can work two ways. It can help you remember your own internal motivation, which was to reach the willing. So you would not be distracted with the unwilling. It's quiet in here, but that's okay. This phronimos can help you by reminding yourself of your own internal. Why are you doing this? Did you do this to call out all the bad folks? Did you do this to argue and fuss with folks? Or did you do this to find those who are open to God's message and plant that seed? Amen. You need to know this because when one of the opposition rolls up on you, you need to know how much time and energy and resource to spend on them. Yes. Let's quickly look at verse 14. By way of example, Jesus said, and whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words when you depart. Did he say, wag your finger in their face and say, I hate you. I'm mad at you. I'm upset with you. You got yours coming. You should be listening. No, he says, when you depart. Out of the house or the city, just shake the dust off of your feet. Shake it off, move on. If you keep on reading, he, it, he, what does he say? He says, shake the dust off your feet. He says, truly, verily, I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable f uh, uh, for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. You just shake the dust off of, your, off of your shoe. You let him take care of the rest. Don't spend a whole lot of time on the opposition. He's saying, in order for you to be successful in this situation, I need you to be smart. I need you to keep your mind on the mission. Amen? Amen. And again, like I said earlier, the other way that this works is discerning the true motivations an agenda behind the words and the actions of others. These are talking about on the mean streets. I'm not talking about the nice, sophisticated, fancy streets of, of Rancho Cucamonga. I'm just kidding. It also can happen in the streets of Rancho Cucamonga. How, did, how about you know that? Now, if we, look, if we go back to Genesis 3, and we don't have to go there, but feel free if you want to, what you'll remember and notice is that Eve didn't recognize Satan's true motivation. She did not use phronimos, amen? She did not use, she did not pay, let, pay attention to what he was really saying and to determine his motivation. So therefore, she thought that he was really thinking of her interests 
when he did what he did and said what he said. Amen. And Satan used this to his advantage. Now, if you go back to Genesis three and you see what Eve said, as a matter of fact, I'm going to go there very, very quickly. Pastor, you said you're going to be fast this morning. You said you're going to finish early, but I just want I just want you to see when he says, you know what? Did he say that you can't, you know, have all the all the all the fruit in the, on all the trees of the garden? Here's what she said. She says, no, we might we may eat the fruit from the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, in the middle of the garden, that is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Why did I read that? Because she quoted God perfectly. She quoted, she knew the word. But what she needed to do is read the man. She knew the word, but in quoting the very word, she revealed her Achilles heel. Satan used it to his advantage because he was shrewd. He recognized in what she said, she quoted it perfectly, but he realized it was the consequences that were her key motivating factor for not doing, not eating the fruit. So all he had to do was attack and challenge the consequences and then cut God down a little bit. And he had it right where he wanted her. There's so many examples. I won't spend time doing it, but I'll just say drug dealers, pimps, other folks take advantage of people. Think about the conversations that occur when that person initially starts with them. They're very astute observers and they're good listeners. And they know how to take advantage of it. They're listening to you when you talk about what you didn't get from your parents. They're listening to you when you talk about how nobody loved you. They're listening to you when you talk about how you had no daddy in the household. And so therefore, they're going to be your daddy. They're going to be your family. They're going to be your caretaker. They're going to be the one that loves you, the one that cares about you. Until they're ready to spit you out. Until you got to have what it is that they have. And then they'll let you see their true colors. Amen. So he used this to his ad advantage. Now, Jesus is not advocating us having this cunning for bad reasons. He wants us to having this have the street smarts for his purposes. Amen. To advance his kingdom, because you in certain situations will find yourself at a disadvantage where Jesus knows that you are like a sheep among wolves. Now, one other quick example I'll share with you. Do you remember the story of Jesus' birth and the three wise men? Uh-huh. They were going to go and visit Jesus. They were going to go to where the star was pointing them to, and they ran up on Herod. Herod was like, hey, dude, you're going over there? I heard you're going over there to see Jesus. I tell you what, if you're going over there, do me a solid. <laughs> when you find him, could you just tell me where he is? Because I really want to worship him. I really want to worship him. Those are the words that he said. But if you have fronimos, you're listening to, you're looking at situational awareness. Street smart, spiritually speaking. So they said, now wait a minute. We know we're here in Israel and we're dominated by the Romans. And they put up with a lot of stuff, but here's what they won't put up with, rebellion. And one of the key things that make them think there might be a rebellion is for any kind of leader to be rising up and getting the attention and getting power in the community. Now, if you add on to that, he going to call himself a king. You know, Herod is not putting up with that. And yet Herod says, hey, you know what? When you find him, could you just let me know? I just want to go worship him. But they said, mm, OK, situational awareness. He's not going to worship Jesus. So what did they do? Did they say, uh-uh, we're not going to tell you. We ain't coming back. We're not going to tell you anything because we have read your mail. No, 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 no. Smart. Shrew. They just walked away. Herod thought he had some good, info, good intel coming, and he had nothing coming because they had what? Phronimos. Herod versus them was no fight. But they read his mail. They evaluated the man, not what he was saying. 
They looked at the situation and they said, okay, the best thing for us to do here is to say nothing and move on and do the right thing. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? That was Phronimos on display. Sophia is wonderful. She's even beautiful. But Phronimos is what Jesus is telling them that they should have just like a serpent, not to be a serpent, not to be evil, not for evil reasons or evil purposes, but I need you to be smart. Practically smart. Situational awareness. Spiritual street smarts. Now, on the other hand, one last example, how many of you remember Samson and Delilah? Bump, 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 signs everywhere. And yet Samson worked against his own interest. He wasn't smart, was he? Because he thought he had it going on. He was so strong, he didn't see the odds as working against him. And he really didn't look at the big picture of what was truly at stake. So now Jesus, now that we understand what the street smarts is that Jesus told them to have because of the situation he was planting and placing them into, let's look quickly at the second thing that he told them because this also is com it complements the first thing. He says, I send you forth as sheep among wolves. Therefore, I need you to do two things. I need you to be wise as serpents, phronimos, and what? Harmless as doves. I'm talking about street smarts. I don't know who this is resonating with, but if you've been on the streets and you know the rules of the streets and you go into the streets and you are outnumbered, outflanked, outpolitic, all that sort of stuff, you got to be smart if you want to survive to do what you are there to do. You can get huffed up and puffed up and prideful and loud and mean and try to beat meanness with meanness and toughness with toughness, but guess what? It ain't about you and your pride. It's about getting to that house to meet that need. So Jesus told them to be harmless as doves. This word harmless does not mean don't be physically harmless. It's more like innocence. Specifically without personal ambition or agenda. You go in there to do what I asked you to do. So make sure you're able to do that. Listen to me now. Let's keep on going. You've got the miracles. You've got the message. Amen. Amen. To attract those who are interested and willing. That's going to bring a lot of attention. When you do all of those healings, you're going to get the people to want to hear Jesus' message. So that's going to bring negative attention from those who oppose Jesus' message. Why would you try to appear to be more of a threat than you have to be, is what he's saying. Right. Why would you make yourself bigger and louder? You already attracting heat. Right. Why would you do that? There's a time for everything. And this is not the time nor the situation for that. This is not the time for you to get huffed up. This is not the time for you to say, want some, get some. Bad enough, take some. Anybody old enough to know what that is? <laughs> this is not the time. I'm rolling deep with Jesus. This is not the time or the situation. I'm sending you as a sheep. Do you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Among wolves. That's the situation. So how do you operate? Be smart. Be smart. And he says, be harmless as doves. Don't make it harder on yourself than it has to be. What he's talking about here, and some of my people will recognize this when I say it. Because when I go out, wherever I go, I go out looking like corny Dr. Morris, but the upbringing never leaves. Still there, but you can't tell. This is the power of making yourself a small target. Hallelujah! Appearing to be non threatening so as not to attract unnecessary heat so that you can go about doing what you were commissioned to do. 
Oh, but you can get prideful and bring heat and have you waste energy and time, even if you get past that challenge. It wasn't the challenge you needed to have. It wasn't a challenge ordained by God. It was your pride that got you in there. This is an unconventional kind of message, but it comes from the Bible. I didn't make it up. Jesus initiated this conversation we're having. The power of making yourself a small target. I don't want to go too far because this is not about criminality, but the mafia doing all kinds of wrong. But they keep a low profile. And when they start trying to floss and trying to get attention, the other dons say, man, stop it. I'm talking, I'm trying to use an example just to give it small target, appearing non-threatening so that you can go about your business, so you can keep on doing what God told you to do. Pride and bravado have no place in a situation like this. In fact, it's counterproductive. So remember situational awareness and spiritual street smarts. I planted some seeds in you this morning. Amen. Simple, right? Amen. Simple, not complicated. It's all right to have Sophia, but Phronimos you need in those certain situations where you know you're outnumbered, you know you're outflanked, you know you're outgunned, and God has placed you there knowing this. This is where you're not to be a serpent, but you're to be just as smart. Don't let him read you, you read him. Don't have him get you talking so that you can tell all your stuff and show all your weaknesses. You get him talking and then believe who he says he really is. OK, because he's going to tell you who he is by what he says. And when he challenges your God, when he challenges your source, when he challenges the one that truly does love you, when he contradicts him, you should stop it right there. But if he does keep going. Even if he sounds like he's in your corner, if you're listening, you're going to know that he's not. And the thing is, knowing that isn't good enough, because if you keep on running right through that stop sign, you're going to be in the same trouble that you didn't have to be in. Amen. How many of your woes, how many of your difficulties, how many of your calamities were caused by the devil and how many were caused by you? How many of your setbacks were caused self-inflicted? Signs, warnings, advice, and you drove right through it because you valued something else over the wisdom of God. Something else over the purposes of God. Something else over your mission. Something else over arriving at your destination and your purpose at the time you were supposed to. You were willing to show up late or never show up at all to tickle your fancy today. To hear what you want to hear today. To do what you want to do today. I'm talking about Phronimos. Street smarts. And I'm assuming you want to make it to tomorrow. I'm assuming you want to do what God has commissioned you to do. All of this assumes you actually want to do what God has told you to do. If you want to just get beat up on the streets, just show up. <laughs> so, my friends, as we all do the Lord's work, and I pray that you're doing yours as I do mine, we are going to find ourselves in these situations. And I pray that you appreciate this word that God is giving all of us because we do operate until Jesus comes back. We're in enemy territory. And we are outnumbered. So be wise. Both Sophia and also Phronimus. But make sure you know when you need that street smarts. Situational awareness. Use your gifts. We all have them. Use your gifts to make the difference that you were created to make. But don't forget discernment. Don't forget good old common sense, which is not common enough. Always putting your pride aside, keeping your pride in check, because the Bible says that pride comes before what? A fall. You can choose 
to let your pride dominate, or you can choose to let wisdom dominate. You can choose to let your flesh dominate and win and guide you, or you can choose to let the spirit and wisdom and a good advice lead you, amen? amen. Or just good old common sense. So always remembering who sent you, the one who sent you and what he means to you and what your relationship should be with him. And always keeping your eye on the prize. Remember what he's asked you to do. Don't make it harder on yourself than it has to be. Be wise, be smart. When somebody shows you who they are, when somebody tells you who they are just because you can pay attention to what they're saying, believe them the first time. Don't make it harder on yourself than it has to be. And don't make yourself a bigger target than you have to be when you're in enemy territory and you have a mission from God. Keep your eye on the prize. Keep your mind on the mission and the mission on your mind. And hopefully that will guide you successfully through a walk with Jesus, making a difference for the people that he has a special burden for, and he's commissioned you to help him, to help them. And to God be the glory. Amen. Amen.